Now, from the start of this week, we've been giving you snippets of the top secret report by the Kwesi Boche-led committee taxed to ascertain the causes of the National Democratic Congress's defeat. Today, we bring you details of another part of the report, which captures uh, you know, reports of some NDC executives during the party's primaries that they sold date and registration forms to parliamentary candidates for tidy sums of money. My colleague Evans Mesa, who is also head of our political desk, joins me in the studio with details. Good evening to you, Evans. Good evening, Arba. Now, what are the specifics of uh, these details you talk about? So, you recall when they expanded the Electoral College, the essence was that it's going, to be, it's going to make it very difficult for people to put delegates in a room and bribe them. Right. But what the another problem we created was this, that data became so important. So the electoral college has been expanded, thousands and thousands of delegates. It's impossible to bribe everybody. But if you can get data on these delegates, where they are, voting patterns, um, their allegiances and loyalties, as a candidate, <laughs> you can target. Right. So what the report says is this. Many instances of influence peddling, corruption, and careerism were party, uh, among party executives were also reported, especially in membership registration in the implementation of the enlarged electoral college. He says, with some executives reportedly selling data and registration forms to parliamentary candidates for, as you said, tiny, tidy sums of money. Um, that is one of the key things that he discovered. But there's even more. And all this goes to the what they said in terms of the recommendations restoring the integrity, capacity, and effectiveness of the party organs. Mm. They make the point that they also noted in the, uh, a, a, that as, and they've also touched on this, the testimonies and expressed concerns of constituents everywhere that the party organs at all levels were marked by conflicts, infighting, factionalism. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, examples were given of, um, of some of these uh, outsiders. Outsiders were brought from Great Accra, to some specific areas in other regions mm -hmm. to come and run um, campaigns there. Okay. And the branches were, were arguing that why do you bring somebody from Accra right. when we understand the local dynamics? In fact, it's captured in the report that people that were sent from Accra mm -hmm. to um, some of the regions did not even understand the local dialect. And right. so how then do they do an effective campaign? But you see, going into the elections, it appeared as if the NDC was very united. Mm -hmm. Now listen to what the report said about the NDC and its, um, whether it was united or not. It says, it is common knowledge that there are deep-seated divisions and an atmosphere of mistrust, suspicion, divided loyalties also, and perhaps even worse, at the National Secretariat. That cannot possibly make for effective decision-making implementation and monitoring. Mm -hmm. The divisions were again painfully evident when a committee met the national executive organs rather than sweep this truth under the carpet mm -hmm. um, and behave as if there's nothing happening. Right. He recommended the party should take seriously and attempt to deal with it. Well, this is quite interesting because, I mean, going into the elections, the impression created was that the NDC was quite united as opposed to the MPP, which uh, many thought were disunited. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but the report was clear that the party appeared to be very, very divided across the country. In fact, it, it talks for, and it mentions the voter region. And the reason why the voter region is important, we all know NDC's stronghold mm -hmm. uh, is the voter region. They get a lot of votes there. But listen to what it says about the, about the voter region, mm -hmm. that the expectations of material reward are then further aggravated by what constituents see as a display of wealth. Right. and improved personal circumstances that come with appointments to political office. In the voter region, we observe that the party has lost something of its, into bracket, connection with the people and has begun to open up an expectations deficit in the region, leading to a growing perception of neglect and being taken for granted. Mm. There also are deep divisions in many of constitu constituencies in the region. That's mm -hmm. the voter region. And that is the part that is interesting. In the western and central region, we noted a lack of unity among the rank and file of the party and among branch and constituent executives as well. And it, it raises what we've been hearing from the central regional chairman of the party today. All right. Now, Evan, since this report came out, since we started serializing mm. the report, uh, you know, many uh, executive members of the NDC have come out to rubbish the report, mm. describing it as fake, among others. Mm. Now, um, not everyone agrees. The chairman of the NDC in the central region has authenticated the report. Disagrees with that the thing is not authentic. In fact, today on Peace FM, Kokoko Show, um, Kuku Baku Jr., who also has a copy of the report, mm -hmm. put it to him, in essence, and read 
um, significant portions of the interceptor report to Mr. Lote Jacobs, who did not have any choice than to say it's true, that what um, Kukubaku had just read to him is in fact uh, in the report. And he also disclosed something that's interesting we didn't know before, that apparently they gathered all regional executives of the party in one room mm -hmm. because after the agitation scheme that, I mean, we are hearing things all over. We yet we haven't seen the report. Mm -hmm. So they put them in a the room and give them a PowerPoint presentation mm -hmm. of the executive summary. Right. And so Kukubaku was asking, after he had read portions, and said, what I just read, in that meeting that you held where they did the part, did you hear that? Then he confirmed that, yes, indeed, it, it, that's true. But he said something even more damning, I guess. I guess one of the most damning confessions so far. Mm. You know, part of the report we've done since Monday details how party resources yes. were diverted, mm -hmm. people pocketed it, mm -hmm. and never got to the regions. And Lothar Jacobs confirms that he, as an, uh, the whole regional chairman of the party, never got any resource. He says, not even t shirt. Wow. He didn't even get t shirt you know, for the party to run campaign in the, mm -hmm. in the region. That mm -hmm. is really startling. Sounds interesting, but I'm sure there's more uh, ahead. And thank you very much. That's uh, head of our uh, political desk here at Joy News, Evans Mensa. Meanwhile, Communications Officer of the National Democratic Congress, Solomon in Kansas, says the failure of the communications team of his party in the 2016 election is because of his exclusion from the strategic, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, strategic communications team of government. He also revealed he was given no funds by the party to run his team and he had to depend on benevolent don donations from notable party members. Solomon and Kansa was speaking on Newsdesk. If the government saw me as somebody they cannot work with and the Congress of the party saw me as somebody who can lead and it became the choice of the government, not the choice of the party. So therefore, we went to election and lost. You can even credit me that if I had been a party to it, I could have also added something that they lacked. In 2012, I was party to all the works we did, and we won. In 2008, I worked from Western Region. Hmm. So therefore, it shouldn't be somebody's decision to handpick people that he or she loves and work with. And the result is where we find ourselves. Hmm. So for anybody to insert my name, that I was a problem. Problem in what? I trained all my communication officers under me, both their capacities. What I failed to do was to, was not able to train polling station communication officers as a result of lack of funds. How come you didn't have the funds? My office was not resourced. I don't run uh, any budget. I go around solicit for funds on my own due to individual uh, contact and friends that I have. But your key office in the party, communications. That is why Professor Boutry sums it up that our communication didn't go well and I will have to up it. Now it's time for fact checking. Today we're focusing on some claims made by former trade and industry minister Echols Fiogabra and Deputy General Secretary of the MPP Nano Bribwahin on ethnicity in Ghana's politics last week. In the following report, Joy News' Raymond Aqua explains how true or false these claims are. Let's start with Mr. Spielgaber's claim on how long the governing NPP has been in existence. This is misleading. The new patriotic party was registered in July 28, 1992. Mr. Spielgaber was probably referring to the antecedents of the MPP, which goes back to the formation of the UGCC in 1947. Many of its founders joined the United Party, UP, which later metamorphosed into the Progress Party, PP. The party, strictly speaking, cannot be said to have existed 60 years ago and had these attributes over the period of time referenced. We cannot hear Deputy General Secretary of the MPP Nano B. Boahin's claims on the educational background of Mr. Spielgabra. The MPP Deputy General Secretary misconstrued the honorary Doctor of Law degree awarded by the US based Middlebury College to Mr. Spielgabra to be an academic PhD and erroneously referenced it as such. <laughs> 